Cheating in professional sports is pretty much as old as the concept of professional sports. When you put together hyper-competitive athletes and competitions worth billions of dollars, a few of those players are bound to try and get an edge using less than legal methods. As you'll soon see, some NBA players can get quite creative when it comes to this. Welcome to NBA Zone, and in today's video, we'll be looking at 10 players who tried to cheat and got caught red-handed. From stealing a possession to intentionally trying to injure opponents and performance-enhancing drugs, we have it all for you today. Before we do that though, make sure you're subscribed to us here at NBA Zone and that you have your notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on our latest videos. Now, let's get started. 10. Andrew Bogut and Brandon Jennings The NBA is the place where amazing happens. Unfortunately, this play was amazing for all the wrong reasons. When you're down nine with a couple of minutes left in the third, getting a pair of free throws is a good thing. However, when the shooter averages just under 60% from the line, that good thing suddenly doesn't look as good anymore. So, what do you do? Most teams would just hope for the best as they watch the guy take his foul shots. In this specific game, the Bucks were not most teams. There was a bit of confusion following a foul on Andrew Bogut. On this play, so the Bucks tried to pull a fast one and put Brandon Jennings, an 82% free throw shooter, on the line instead. Jennings sunk the first free throw before the jig was up and the refs finally figured out what was going on. The point got waved off, and karma came for the Bucks as Bogut missed both of his shots. Andrew Bogut draws the foul. Now notice, Brandon Jennings isn't even a part of this play. Jennings is an 81% free throw shooter. He walks to the line. Bogut, a 59% free throw shooter, he walks underneath. Jennings shoots the free throw and makes it. The referees make the switch, and then Jennings... <laughs> Jennings is like, all right, you got me. So now Bogut is at the line. Clank, but Bogut clanks the second one as well. Nine, Draymond Green. To say that many NBA players don't like Draymond Green is an understatement. There's a good reason for that since he's known for doing some pretty dirty stuff on the court. Just ask Steve Adams or some of the other guys who got a kick to the crotch from Green. As dirty as that might be, it's not what earned Green a spot on this list. He earns his spot with his huddle invading antics. Huddles are very important for teams. It's where you discuss your next play or strategy adjustments valuable information that you probably don't want your opponent to know. Green loves to infiltrate the opposing team's huddle and listen in on it. Whether or not he actually overhears some valuable information doesn't even matter since just his presence in your huddle can piss you off and waste valuable time when you're getting him to go away. He's far from the only huddle invader in the NBA, but he is the most famous one. 8. DeAndre Ayton The Phoenix Suns entered the 2019-20 season with playoff ambitions and their opening night blowout win against the Kings was a great first step. Less than 24 hours later, their playoff hopes took a step off a cliff when it was revealed that DeAndre Ayton would be suspended for 25 games. Ayton tested positive for a diuretic, a chemical that can be used as a masking agent that can hide the presence of other banned substances, such as various pets, in your system. Now, having a diuretic in your system doesn't automatically mean that you've used pets, and that is why Ayton tried to argue but the NBA was having none of it. His suspension was upheld, and the Suns had to play about a third of their regular season games without the star center. Even their 8-0 bubble record wasn't enough to get them into the playoffs, but at least Aiden learned something from the whole situation. 7. John Collins The Phoenix Suns aren't the only young team to lose a player to a drug-related suspension this season. Unlike the Suns, the Atlanta Hawks probably didn't enter the season with playoff hopes, but losing one of their most productive pieces in John Collins for 25 games still stings. Collins picked up his suspension after he tested positive for growth hormone-releasing peptide 2, a banned chemical that stimulated your growth hormone secretion. Collins claimed that a contaminated supplement was responsible for his positive tests, but once again, the NBA was having none of it. Given how the Hawks finished second to last in the Eastern Conference, they wouldn't have made the playoffs even if Collins didn't get suspended. But with a young core like theirs, player development and team chemistry building make every game important regardless of your record. 6. Bruce Bowen Zaza Pachulia sliding over Kawhi Leonard and injuring his ankle in 2017 led to the creation of the so-called Zaza Pachulia rule to protect shooters in the future. That injury may have changed the entire future of the San Antonio Spurs, but many people seem to have forgotten that a former Spurs player is actually the OG of sliding under shooters. It's tough to say if Bruce Bowen is better known for his defense or his dirty plays, but sliding under shooters was his signature move. Spend a minute or two searching online and you'll find countless examples of Bowen causing injuries this way. Bowen was actually one of the most vocal critics of Zaza's defense on Kawhi, which is more than ironic given his own history. 5. Jared Dudley 
When you're a self-proclaimed man with no hops and you're pitted against an athletic seven-foot center on a jump ball, it's safe to say that the odds aren't exactly in your favor. When Jared Dudley had to jump against Andrew Bynum, he knew he had no chance. Instead of jumping, he went for the steal as Bynum was tipping the ball to a teammate. This is not something that a player who's jumping can legally do, but the ref stays silent as Dudley stole the ball and his pass led to free throws for one of his teammates. Of course, the Lakers protested this, and the refs actually held up to discuss the situation, but to everyone's surprise, they let the play stand and the Suns shot their free throws. And that's not allowed. Yeah. He's the jumper. Right. So it had to touch somebody else, and that's what Pau Gasol is saying. How can yeah. he Phil, jump out and Phil get Jackson the ball? Jackson is coming over to Joe DeRosa. And he that's, to. That's the, see, he's the jumper. He cannot leave the circle and go get the ball. I assume they're talking about it now. They should be, that's some of the things they should talk about. And they're not, they're not going to change it. Nope. Based on what I knew of the rule, he can't leave the circle, be the first to grab it out of, <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. Four, Hito Turkoglu. Hito Turkoglu has a solid NBA career but it probably would have been even better if it wasn't for various injuries. Turkoglu spent the summer of 2012 recovering from an injured shoulder in his home country of Turkey. He was ready to go for the 2012-13 season, but he was slapped with a 20-game suspension midway through it because of a failed drug test. He tested positive for methanolone, an anabolic steroid that was found in some Olympic gold medalists not long before. Of course, Turkoglu didn't come out and admit to taking an anabolic steroid for performance-enhancing purposes, and he offered an alternative explanation instead. His excuse was that the methanolone was taken to relieve pain and speed up his recovery process. Regardless of the real reason, the substance is clearly banned, and Hito should have known better. At least he had time to think about it while he was serving his 20-game suspension. 3. Dwight Howard Dwight Howard's NBA career has been a real roller coaster, and there have been plenty of things that can be said about the way he acted at certain points of it. However, many people still loved him, and what he did to earn a spot on this list is genuinely one of the funniest and most unexpected instances of cheating in NBA history. Stick'em is a sticky substance that athletes in some sports can legally use to make it easier to catch or hold onto the ball. Dwight was apparently using it for a while during his time with the Rockets, and it came to light when Paul Millsap figured something was wrong with the ball after Howard was the last person to handle it. Stick'em isn't outright banned by the NBA rules, but it isn't exactly legal either. When Dwight admitted to using it, many media outlets and even players mocked him instead of calling him a dirty cheater, because a sticky substance will probably do you more harm than good as a basketball player. 2. Joaquim Noah Back in the day, Joaquim Noah was a force to be reckoned with on the defense and one of the better players in the league overall. Unfortunately, injuries have completely derailed his career. Excuse his actions. 1. Joe Smith Under the table deals are something that you might not be surprised to hear about in college basketball. But nobody would be crazy enough to try something like that in the NBA, right? Enter Joe Smith. After a great start to his NBA career, Smith declined an $80 million extension from the Warriors and chose to become a free agent. There was plenty of demand for his services, so everyone was caught off guard to see he signed with the Timberwolves for less than $2 million, well below his market value. As it turned out, there was an illegal deal in place where Joe would sign three one-year deals for very little money. That would allow the Timberwolves to acquire his bird rights and then go over the cap to resign him for up to $86 million. A lawsuit involving the agency that represented